And we're live. Okay, I am Austin Light with American Demon Comics, and I'm joined by my friend Brandon Ingram with Dismay Comics. Uh, how's the uh, how's everything treating you over there in in Navarre? Ah, uh, pretty good. Things have been pretty good. Uh, busy week that happens sometimes where it's just out of the blue, but things things have been pretty good. Good. Had, had a good convention week and a half ago. Free comic book days coming up, so things are good. Yep, we both are probably very excited to see what free comic book day has in store for us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. This year is going to be a little bit different. <clears throat> Tio is going to be able to help me this year, and it's the same shop as last year, but he'll have to leave a little after twelve, close to one. And I'll be there probably till like 3.30. So this is my first time uh, a chunk of hours. I'll be doing a convention or a comic thing uh, by myself. So if there's dead times, I might be looking down at my phone to try to kill those dead times. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, you know, when we first brought it up a few months ago, you were like, well... Why don't you, uh, have you reached out to the deep? Have you considered doing it at the deep? And I was like, well, um, I, I kind of wanted to show my loyalty to my local store. Um, and it also was kind of like, a, I'm just going to tip my toes into the water of free comic book day and see what the traffic is there uh, at my local store. But, um, I started hanging out with Robbie from the pop culture philosophers uh, and, uh, and me and him have been uh, started a pretty good friendship. Like it's just like a whole circle of us. There's uh, a few people um, that we've befriended uh, and that was thanks to the low mill con. Um, we started hanging out with uh, several of them and they've been really, really good fun. And and in all honesty, I was just kind of like, because like I, I befriended them and then they were like, yeah. they kept mentioning like, Oh, we need to get Robbie to come around. We need to get Robbie to come around. And I was like, Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. And then when I saw a picture of Robbie that they were talking about, I was like, that's the pop culture guy. <laughs> so, he's on you. He's a, our local YouTube, like, you know, guy and and not only that but he's a the comics guy specifically yeah yeah um so it just organically kind of got us into each other and he uh reached out and was like do you just want to like you want to do it at the deep you want to set up at the deep and i was like i don't i don't know i could let me let me think this over let me talk you know um and the green bros Green Bros are so nice. They're so kind. They're like, yeah, man, like go do it. And it's not like, it's not like I would be bringing them business. You know what I mean? Like it's not right, me. Right, that's right. going to be drawing anybody there. So it's like, well, duh. Of course they don't really care where you set up. So, um, but uh, they have shown my project and everything, a lot of love. So I, I didn't want to do that to them. It felt like a betrayal, but at the same time, um, they kind of uh, gave me their blessing. So I got back with Robbie. He was like, yeah, I'll set up at the deep. He's like, cool thing, man. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. like, uh, And also something that I haven't done one of these, so I, I don't entirely know how they go at a... a bigger shop or a smaller shop or whatever but like whenever you <clears throat> have your next release or whatever you could always do signings there um and then just just see how that goes and you can do signings anywhere you could do a little tour if you want of <laughs> signings but well that's the uh that's the thing about my signings i don't i'm not going to charge anything for signing yeah yeah and uh so technically anytime i set up is a signing yeah, yeah excuse me so if i'm going to set up my booth i'm going to be signing yeah, um yeah. and uh but what i i, I uh, was thinking about what you said with dead time like 
uh, I, might, I might get some dead time. And I was like, I've been at the deep during free comic book day. <laughs> I don't I think I'll be getting any dead time. I was going to say Huntsville. Like, I, I haven't been at the deep, but just like mm-hmm. strictly Huntsville in that area, because that's like right next to Low Mill and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I don't see there being any dead time from like when the shop opens to like 3.30 or however long you stay. Yeah, 2 or 3 uh, o'clock. It, yeah, it, it, it depends on down. the shop. Like uh, TBS Comics in Pensacola last year, it was my first time doing a free comic book day, so I didn't know how long to stay. I originally said till 5 p.m. Um, I think they would have been fine with me leaving any time, but I did mm-hmm. say 5 p.m., so I wanted to stay then. But uh, yeah, around <clears throat> maybe... 2.30 or 3 is really when it started slowing down. And really from like maybe 3.30 to 5 or like 4 to 5, it was like pretty dead. Yeah. But I mean like before that though, from opening to 1 p.m., any comic shop for free comic book day, it is <laughs> It yeah. is crazy. Like, so. Um, yeah, so. I'm not really sure if it would be honestly, I don't know if it'd be any difference in the business that I have between both places. Um, just because I know the, the green bows are pretty popular here in town. Like, yeah, yeah. they're, they're going to be having a big, uh, a big crowd, um, at their shop for sure. And they got like a 20% discount going on. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm excited. It's, uh, I gotta say though, <laughs> Huntsville did the deep dirty, like real dirty. I haven't been oh, there really? in years. I had not been there in years. I went the like two days ago. Um, and they have built a storage like company storage. Oh, the storage unit got, like Those are popping up everywhere, <laughs> especially bro, where I live. Oh my! This whole thing is like three stories above the deep and it's facing the highway it's right next to the deep and then and then it goes towards the highway and you cannot see the deep anymore you used to be able to see it you cannot see it um the only reason i knew where to turn is because i know it's in front of low mill so yeah yeah i i was like well there's low mill it's around here somewhere and that that sucks because yeah yeah now it's like it's you have to be searching for a comic shop you have to be looking out for it rather than like driving on the road and it's like oh that's interesting like right man that sucks um yeah like we we've had because i live in like the panhandle of florida and like Destin, Florida is like 30, 40 minutes away. It's where people come to retire and die, basically. Um, <laughs> that's that's what Destin, Florida is. It's nothing but old people. Yeah. And people rooming, young people rooming together to live there because it costs so much. Um, but there's just storage units all over Destin, as well as like, like in Navarre and stuff. And it's just like, I, I'm so tired of it because I'll see like <laughs> new stuff like being built like in Navarre or on the mm-hmm. way to Destin. I'm like, Ooh, is it going to be like a new this or a new that like, <laughs> another no, storage unit? Yeah. Like, like I, I get, I get you have like maybe, maybe some, some sentimental stuff or stuff you want to keep and it, it doesn't fit in your house, but people, you can throw some crap away. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I was about, to, I was about stop, to say, stop collecting a bunch of crap. And I say that because like, like I have family that does that. I have very mm-hmm. close family that that doesn't use storage units, but their house is a storage unit, basically. Yeah. Um, it's like like we don't need all this stuff, and we just think we do, and we store it away, and then you never use it for 10, 20 years. I was about to say, yeah. I wonder if this is like a, an American problem where we just we've just got so much stuff now it's exactly what it is over the you know over the century um of living good uh and then you know a lot of people like to keep old stuff because they think it'll be valuable because of its scarcity in the future and um 
you know, that I guess I guess inevitably we would have a lot of storage places opening up. I get it. And it is, it is bad in Huntsville too. Like there's like at least four or five, like big name storage companies, not to mention all the mom and pop ones. Yeah. Yeah. Like I understand it for a few reasons. I understand, uh, uh, if you have like old, family heirlooms and stuff and it's being passed down and you want to keep it in the family you don't have room or something in your house i get that but also that's a lot of heirlooms like like you can <laughs> that's too many you don't need like that's every piece of you don't need every item from your grandfather or great great grandfather you mm-hmm. can have a lot of it you don't need every item though you don't need mm-hmm. his used napkin or whatever like there's stuff that you can part with mm-hmm. go to pawn um, stars yes yeah go to pawn <laughs> stars or, or facebook marketplace <laughs> or whatever do something there's that um and then like uh uh people who <clears throat> their business like they have a business and they have to have some extra extra storage stuff i get that like like we were just talking about comic shops sometimes comic shops have storage units um they store extra stuff in there Mm -hmm. Uh, not just comic shops but there's other places like that aside from that people if it doesn't fit in your house or or whatever it may be maybe you don't need it anymore i know that's wild (laughs) but but i I think we have there's a a word that i want to use instead of crap but we have way too much crap Mm -hmm. you don't need all of this Sorry, that's a whole rant because I've been seeing <laughs> storage units pop up all yeah. over around me and I'm so tired of it. Yeah, and to and to do, you know, to crush, you know, this little comic shop that's only only supported by its card games, you know. Yeah. Um I mean, I haven't talked to them. I don't know how they feel about that. That could have, you know, that's probably something that happened over a year or two years ago, you know? Um, so it could be dust in the wind to them by now, but I, I pulled up and I was like, this is ridiculous. Cause yeah. it, it's not even like spaced. It's, it's like, it's right up against the store. Uh, and then there's no visual from, it's just completely dwarfed by this storage unit. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, I've got several things that have come to mind. Um, I wanted I wanted to kind of just go off the cuff with this one, but uh, yeah, yeah. I've have come to think of a few things. Uh, one thing is I want to be getting my Kickstarter underway pretty soon. Um, another thing is uh, Comics Wellspring has just lost so much respect for me uh these past few days and then uh and then i've watched a few movies i watched uh, this movie called the bay i watched nightmare on El- elm street for the first time uh, i watched silent hill basically for the first time because the first time i watched it i was so young i don't it's like not even there um so yeah uh kickstarter and i i probably you probably have read up a little bit on it if you have looked at the emails Um, i'm probably going to start in june i feel like i kind of have to start in june um especially with the way comics wellspring (laughs) is uh dummy yeah uh, these past few days so uh I feel like I need to be kind of on all cylinders. There's like bonus pages I want to be making. I got a cut. I got a color my cover page. I haven't finished the entire issue yet. I'm, you know, probably about 10 pages away from that. And I'm think, uh, I'm thinking I'll probably be still be finishing it while the Kickstarter is happening, but I I want to get some of those promotional things done first. Um, and uh yeah so i'm getting pretty excited about that um i've kind of wrote down a uh a 
plan to uh, the different things I need to do. Like I want to change my profile pictures and banners to have like a little bit of like a kick. It's like Kickstarter reminder um, happening from this day to this day or something like that. Um, and uh, I want to be reaching out to you. I want to reach out to Adam and Robbie and everybody to kind of like help uh, get the word out. Um, yeah, yeah. I want to, I'm going to be using Substack like crazy. I've got like an idea to be posting like three or four social media um, or like go ahead and make some three or four social media yeah, yeah. posts per week um, while it's going on. And yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I think I got the tiers written out. I, I would go over those tiers more specifically with you, but we might wait till next time. Um, but yeah. How, how many tiers do you have? If you don't mind me asking. Four right now. I I've got it. What's, what's the, uh, the price range from lowest tier to highest tier? So the first three are going to be your like basic stuff. Um, it's a ten dollar at the first one, um, and that gets both digital PDFs of the comic, uh, the issue one and issue two. Um, and then up from that, I would say I think is the twenty dollar, where you get both the digital uh, one and two and no, I think it's 15 because it's just, it's the digital one and two, and then it's just issue two physical copy. Okay. Um, and then up from that is like a 20 or 25 and it's, and it comes with, uh, both copies. And I lied because I think there's four standard tiers that I'm going to have. Um, but this fourth one is kind of elite. It's going to be like, um, it's going to have the variant issue and I'm, I'm having the variant issue be charged more because it is number one. I won't be print. I'm going to print as many as well. I'm just, I'll say it. I'm printing 40 of the, the variant, the variant. Yeah. And I'm not printing anymore. So they're scarce. They're rare. And if you mentioned that in the Kickstarter for the, uh, I'll, I'll just briefly mention with all the um, uh, uh, comic collectors and different stuff that you'll likely be reaching out to to help promote it. That'll help be a good selling point as well mm -hmm. for them. Yeah, um, that's that's the hope, and uh, but you know. Uh, the scarcity of it and and me uh, pay, reaching out and paying Adam um, and him putting his work into that makes it a little bit more valuable to me. So um, I think that's at a 35, I want to say, tier. And again, it comes with everything else. The digitals, it doesn't come with your standard cover. It's just going to be your variant that you order. Um, and then the fifth tier is and i don't know if you can do this and you might be able to answer this for me um but the fifth tier is like a one person can do this kind of thing and it's yeah, like yeah. 450 i think is what i'm gonna mark this one out as and it's gonna have the original ink of the second issue cover from me uh like my version um, and all the process steps that I had leading up to it. And then it comes with everything else. Uh, and then I'm thinking about adding something else to that. But yeah, that's uh, just for now, that's what it is. Um, yeah, and th that, that's a good one. Because yeah, they do have like a, a limited tier type stuff. Like <clears throat> you could do stuff up to like think a hundred sometimes like 200 or whatever but yeah you can do mm -hmm. like a one of one and then once it's sold it's or once someone backs that it's no longer uh, uh available for other people to try to get so, right yeah. 
that's possible on Kickstarter. Um, are you doing uh, in any of the tiers? Are you doing um, physical copies of issue one? Or are you going to put those in add-on section? Or I think I think um, tier two or three has the physical copy of no tier three. I think is where the physical copy of one starts coming in. Okay. Um, and that's because tier two is like, it's, I'm trying to make it as in between the ladders I can. And so you have both digital PDFs and then you have issue two physical. Um, so that does give you access to the story of number one. Um, and that's how I kind of see it. And then up from that, then you have the physical one and two and the digital PDFs. Okay. Yeah. I, I was just checking. Cause I know there's a, there's a good bit of people that like just love reading physical. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have tiers with both issue one and two physical, that, that would be really good. I also have a feeling that people, uh, there are going to be a lot of people that back my Kickstarter that have already got number one. Um, mm. So I think that that would that would be fair as a uh, as a tier option is is just having the physical copy of number two. Oh yeah yeah uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, any other thoughts? Um, I think that's pretty good. And then like uh, you you've probably thought about this but with um <clears throat> that add-on section that's there there's not a ton of purchases purchases that come from that but there are some mm -hmm. like like what i mean by that is if you just want to put stickers or anything you have or, or whatever it may be poster prints whatever it may be mm -hmm. add-on section actually is is pretty good and you will get at least a few people if not more that will add that stuff to their order um I, so I don't, I'm not familiar with, I haven't set anything up yet, so I'm not familiar with how that works, but I know of stretch goals and I know how stretch goals work. So I did put, um, you know, a, after a bonus 250, everybody gets a sticker and after a yeah. bonus more 250, everybody gets the enamel pin. Um, so that's how that's, yes, I think that works. Uh, all right. Um, the comments uh, wellspring. Yeah, uh, uh, I wanted to talk about I, them. So I, I'm. I want to briefly <laughs> say I, I. I. I'm sorry for whatever you're going through with them right now, but I'm excited to talk about this uh, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I feel like. Comics Wellspring, in terms of the quality and the price, is the best that's out there. But come on, we need a competitor that can <laughs> do better or or push them to do better. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I look, I still use Comics Wellspring. I pay for the product, so I, I can do a review of it. And I want to briefly say I'm tired of people kissing butt to Comics Wellspring. Mm -hmm. All right, they need to do better. And we're going to talk about this, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I want to get out. I'm going to get into it. The, the last week, I want to say last Friday, last Thursday, um, I had, let, no, let me go back further. Like two or three weeks ago, I was like, you know what? I should have 50. I, instead of getting 25, Maybe I should go ahead and just order 50 and I'll have that stock because I have art on the lake coming up and I have yeah, yeah. Um, free comic book day coming up. And um, I asked if they could do that and I would just pay the difference. It'd just be like he up and they're like, um, we've already sent it to print or something like that. And so eh, not much we can do. Uh, we, we've, we've already addressed the file. We've already done X, Y, Z. Not much we can do. I was like, okay, well, 
I guess that at least means that it should be here pretty soon if they've already done like reviews of it and are getting it ready to be. What what was the up. difference before you had contacted them? Was it the quantity? Was that what, it's that's that the, the quantity? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, uh, I wasn't too peeved about that, and I was like, surely I I ordered this in March, March fourteenth to be exact. And surely I'll have it here by the 21st or the 20th of April, uh, over, over a month later. Um, it's something that they printed before and, you know, I should be able to have 25 easy comics, uh, for art on the lake. Well, they didn't get here for and, art on the lake. Well, I also want to say, did, did you have to do a physical proof or no? Uh, no, I did not choose to do a physical proof. Um, so, so the time should be even shorter. Right. Because there's right. no that back and forth dealing with the physical proof. So mm -hmm. giving a month, giving a month for them to do their thing. Heck, you, it was basically a month and a half. That's very generous. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is it hasn't got here yet. It did not get there. Um, fast forward a little bit. Uh, I was like, hey, um, what's the update on these comics? Cause like nothing's changed. There's no change. You know, there, um, I think last time on the comics wellspring website, when I could sign into my account and look at the orders, it would yeah, yeah. give me an update. And it says the last update was when I ordered it March 14th. And I was like, surely it'll be, they'd be printing it by now because they said they couldn't raise the quantity for whatever reason. Um, and they were like, oh, it's uh, it's getting ready. They should print it next week. Yeah, they should print it next week. Okay, well, this week comes around. And I'm like, look, it's Monday. I ordered these over a month ago. And I would love, love to have them for free comic book day. And I'm really trying not to be mean. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm really trying not to be mean. I have done that a lot with comics. <laughs> <laughs> but I would love to have them here. Um, I want to iterate. I need these before Saturday, if not before Friday, because there's prep work to getting them in the first place. I got to get the paper off of them. Yeah, and I got to yeah. get them in the bags and boards and seal them up. Um, and they're like, Oh, it's a, uh, your order is top priority and it's uh, in the next thing to, in the batch to, to print. And here we are Thursday and I've had, you know, like I said, in the little portal on your website um, where, where they update everything is still no change since March 14th. And I'm like, I'm just going to have to do a pre-order list. I'm going to have to have a pre-order list at free comic book yeah. day. I have, I have half comics that I, that I need to get rid of. So I can sell them for like two bucks. Um, and I've got some misprints that I had from best value copy, um, that I could sell for four bucks. Um, but I'd really like to have like a bag and board, nice comic yeah, yeah. and be able to sign it for people. And, and, have it there for them for free comic book day. <laughs> um, and they didn't, they, they haven't got it. it. It, they could still pull a hail Mary and have it on like flight priority. Number one shipping and have it, it here tomorrow comes in tomorrow. Yeah. But I doubt it. <laughs> I'm not giving you any hope here. That's not what I'm trying to do. But there have been times where I've done an order and I've looked at the update online and there's been nothing. And then it just appears that week. Like mm -hmm. no one told me it was coming that week, which, yeah, I'm glad it appeared like it came that week. But I wish I like knew. Right. Um, uh, so I'm not trying to give you hope, but <laughs> Comics Wellspring doesn't always keep you updated. Or, or okay. Their okay. Up. Cause I've been checking my email and I, cause like, I just kind of expect that an email comes through that's like, Hey, your, your order has been shipped, blah, blah, yeah. blah. So, um, 
and that's kind of what I've been gauging this off of. No email, no shipment. So okay, I'm not trying to be a Karen here, but we get to a point eventually. You got to Karen out. If you <laughs> don't get these by free comic book day, and you don't have these for free com free comic book day, you need to send an email to them, whoever you're talking to or mm -hmm. the higher up person to that you need to say hey i ordered these in march middle of march i've already talked about that i needed them for this time i've talked mm -hmm. about that and i still haven't got them and it I'm not saying it, it, it ruined your experience you're going to have a, a great free comic book day if you have them or don't but like this has really soured my experience with you guys Right. Um, is, is there a way because I needed these for two events, really, and you still haven't got them to me? Mm -hmm. um, can you give me some some sort of in-store credit or something? And right. usually they will. I know that sounds like a very Karen thing, and I, I don't I don't do that mm -hmm. with people. I've done it once. Let me see. Yes, once with Comics Wall Street. I was trying to think if I've done it a second time. It seems like I've done it a second time with all the trouble I've had with them. But I've had to do that before where it's like, hey, like I needed this this day. <clears throat> I ordered right. it almost two months ahead and I didn't get it. Like, can you? And not only that, no, I think it wasn't just that. It was also like all the headache and stuff I was dealing with because there would be things where like they, they sent the physical proof. I approved the, the physical proof. And then the comics get to me, all 100, 200 comics or whatever, and they are not what the physical proof shows. Like, like one example was it wasn't even the same paper type that I approved. Yeah. And I was like, hey, like, come on. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a lot of headache. Like, like I'm shipping these back. I know you guys will ship me the actual ones. That's the plus side is it's for free, but it's a mistake on your part. You should ship it for free. I'm right. not applauding comics. Wellspring for that. Any business mm -hmm. does that. Um, before I would applaud them for that, but I've dealt with that so much where it's like, no, I'm not going to applaud you for, <laughs> Hey, you made Same a mistake thing. and you fixed it. Like, yeah, like all companies do that. Um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> Please, some other <laughs> either either there needs to be changes in Comics Wellspring, or there needs to be another company that rises up and is truly a competitor to Comics Wellspring in mm -hmm. terms of quality and price, so that Comics Wellspring can get their crap in order, and just get because I was actually listening to a, a podcast a couple of days ago, and it's funny. One of the guys was talking about Comics Wellspring and his complaints with it. Um, it's a Sam Vera from a uh, catch the craze podcast, but um, yeah, they were talking about different stuff and Sam was talking about how he ordered some prints or, or something. I can't remember. Didn't show up when it was supposed to, or even the couple weeks after or whatever it may yeah. be. And uh, they, they've posted this on social media and different stuff like a month ago or a couple months ago they did move to a new location mm -hmm. i remember that they got in a new warehouse or whatever moved to a new location so there's stuff with that there's also new employment and stuff like that but uh, here's my thing because i've i've been dealing with them since 2020 i've been ordering through comics wellspring since 2020 this is not a new thing with them right i because I have experience with them, I'm not going to like excuse it where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I understand they're, 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 the company's rising. So they had to get a new building and they yeah. get new employees for that new building and all that stuff. The same exact problems that are happening now happened last year, happened the year mm -hmm. before, happened in 2020. I've had, I'm trying to think how many times I've ordered with Comics Will Spring, at least five. Yeah, I think at least five times. And I think four out of those five times I've had an issue with the order, mm -hmm. whether it's it's showing up too late, which all of them show up too late. 
I don't think <laughs> I had a single one that showed up right. on the time they said, um, even back in 2020 and all that. Um, yeah, they, they show up too late and almost all of them have had an issue. And maybe I'm too nitpicky. I'm too editorial. I'm paying nearly $4 a unit or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to make sure like <laughs> you do your job and there's not like freaking printer smudges or, or like a, a big dot on some random pages or on the cover freaking <laughs> sorry I, this is giving me war flashbacks basically freaking disney let's avenue go one and two disney avenue one and two when i had that kickstarter back in late 2022 um that one cover where it's like the girl and her face she's going like oh mm -hmm. like like yeah. that or whatever there are multiple copies where there's just like a big white dot on her nose and it looks so stupid because it was an issue with the printer. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just <laughs> one of those things where like multiple times I've had to say, which I'm not, I'm not trying to put anyone's job on the line or anything like this. It's just what I have had to do multiple times. I've had to say, Hey, with like your, your, your uh, checks and balances at the end. Cause they do that after it's printed people will look over it look over it some more because clearly you're not looking over it enough mm -hmm. i didn't say it as me but <laughs> if i keep if i have to email them three four weeks ahead i no longer care yeah I, i'm i'm not like cussing anyone out but i'm just stating the facts like i'm getting very close and i'm I just dealing this. with this once <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm a, I'm a, a war-torn veteran of <laughs> Well, um, someone did tell me about a printing company just offhand uh, called Mixum, M-I-X-A-M. I've heard good things about Mixum, but the prices is... The yeah, their thing. prices are a little bit steeper. Yeah. But if I order from them and they do everything as crystal as can be and as fast mm -hmm. as can be, I'm not going to give a shit. Probably worth it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It'll honestly be worth it. <laughs> like i've had so, i've had issues with uh uh oh i had issues with tells from town city as well like my latest one from last year and i remember talking to my sister or some other maybe some other comic person i was like in all honesty if there was another competitor that could have the quality and heck each unit is a dollar more i'll i'll happily go with them because mm -hmm. I'm just so tired of, of, I had to go through like three physical proofs with Tells from Town City. Yeah. Because like I, I laid it out in thorough detail and I just get the proof and it's like, this is the same issue as last <laughs> time. <laughs> you made no change. Now I'm kind of concerned. I'm going to get these, these 25 comics are all going to be messed up in some way that I've been waiting over yeah. a month for. I'm going to open them up and it's going to be like, just dark it's just gonna be black pages or something because that's kind of what happened it just got darker and darker yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I, i've had like some uh some i think with tells from town city one of the things was uh which ultimately it, it worked out in the end i remember one of the proofs or some of the comics that came back or something uh the pages were like it was a darker color tone than what I sent basically. Mm -hmm. And I, I had mentioned that I was like, Hey, like, like, can y'all adjust the printer? Like I'll send these back. Y'all can send me new copies or something. Can y'all adjust the printer, like the brightness or whatever? Because like, like I understand, well, well they, I sent that. Then the person messaged back and was like, well, it's not going to be the exact color as the, the document because that's just not how it works. And I was like, I know I've, I've been doing this <laughs> with you guys and other printers for a few years. I know it's not going to be exactly the same, but I know it can be more Look better than this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah, Brandon, you just, uh, yeah. Uh, call them out. Start boxing a little word boxing there. I, um, I'm, 
I'm at the point where, like, a couple years ago, I, I like, if I was on podcasts and stuff, I would even mention, like, I, I would be like, yeah, I've had issues here and there, but, like, like when I, I contacted them and stuff, they fixed it, so so that was a good thing. But I'm at the point where, like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, Brandon, like, you're going to be if the... You keep, if you keep making mess ups and mistakes, and maybe I'm just like too meticulous and critical about the comic. I don't think I am. But if you just keep messing up with every order, like it gets to me to where You're I'm gonna... now like, <laughs> I'm, I'm no longer going to be making excuses for you, Comics Well Spring, because I don't know why I was before. <laughs> I have no idea why I was before. Like, was I thinking like, oh, I'll get some sort of partnership out of this? I don't know what the hell I was thinking. <laughs> like, like, it's not like anything's out it for me. I'm paying for your stupid service so I can voice my opinion on it. <laughs> well, they're, they're, you're getting them to the point where you send your emails. They're like, oh, it's this Brandon guy again. <laughs> I, no, no, here's the thing. With, with, uh, Disney Avenue. I'm I'm almost certain uh, that was the case because it got transferred over to someone. Else. <laughs> I, was I can't deal with this else. guy. I can't deal with this um, guy. Tell us from Jacob, Town City you was take probably him, Jacob. the same. But it, it's just like it's just, <laughs> it's just like come on. look, look. I worked in something of a printing company um, for two of them actually. Uh, I worked for BPI Media for a little bit, and I worked for Paragon Pictures. And um, I was a lot less hands-on at BPI, but they did a lot of the same stuff. They did brochures, they did flyers, they did your basic um, booklet printing, magazine printing kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they made sure uh, those you, those, and and a lot of printers are this way, but they made sure those. Uh, that went through um, at the bottom. They look clean in the middle. They look clean at the top. They look clean in every stack. Um, when I worked at Paragon and I would pull a canvas out of the, the big printer, there were all, there were lines that would run uh, horizontal and in, in these big, beautiful paintings Um they're not really paintings, they're printed paintings, but it's supposed to look like a beautiful painting. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, that's what people are ordering. And what I would have to do is I'd cut those, cut those off, uh, put them into the waste, and look at the printer. I'd have to open up the printer, start cleaning some heads, start... To, and this happened all the time. This happened all the time. I hated this problem. Because I could clean it, I could um, run an automatic cleaner uh, for the, the, you know, what it does. It would print one really beautiful, and the next one, halfway through it, starts showing those horizontal lines again. <laughs> oh, that was a pain. But I worked there. It's my job to make sure that those were clean and that those were yeah, yeah. Uh, good to ship. Um, so, and then we printed paper media too. Same thing that happened. It was just a lot easier to deal with. Um, I could run some printer checks and see what nozzles need to be clean and then have those nozzles cleaned, you know, uh, a little bit quicker. Um, those had their own problems, but still most of the quality of the prints that were put out. I had to look at myself and I guess with the graphics design background, I had a little bit more of an eye to be catching those kind of things. Uh, but it, it's not that hard. Yeah. So, and then, and then like, not, not just with like <clears throat> printing issues, but sometimes there's packaging issues. The most common one I've seen with Comics Wellspring, which I think they may have corrected it now with the uh, the cover, like it has the piece of paper on it, and you just tear it off. Yeah. Before that, um, sometimes you'd have to request, like, can you put a 
piece of paper between the copies because mm-hmm. sometimes the ink like like meshes you and you, combine, you get yeah. spots and stuff because of that um, not only that they wouldn't put sheets on the top and the bottom one of because they usually it's usually in stacks of 25 is how they'll mail it and then they'll wrap it in plastic they usually don't put because they'll put cardboard on top but that's not enough you need a sheet of paper on on top of the comic sheet of paper on the bottom one because and this is the most common issue i've had maybe it's been corrected with the whole paper cover thing but it's so tightly pressed that sometimes there's spine ticks and nicks to the top or bottom if it's not that this is the most common thing there will be like I don't even know how to describe it. These like, like there's probably a word for it. I see it as like a sweat line. Like Mm -hmm. there's these lines on the comic where it's these shiny lines. It's in the same color, but if you hold it to hold it up to light, it's just these like lines that are there. And you also see it on the bottom one with the back cover. Uh, And a big part of that was they just didn't put paper between these. And that's the most common thing I've seen because with those, again, I'm paying $4 a unit here or close to, <laughs> I will pull those, pull the top, I'll pull the bottom. And I usually order 200 plus comics or whatever. I'll go through each stack. If each top and bottom has that, I'm going to set it to the side. Once I'm done checking all the comics, cause I do that cause I'm an insane person. Once I'm done checking all the comics, I'll bag and board them. And then those that have those lines or any issues, I take pictures. I mm-hmm. get the proof and I'll yeah. send it to email and I'll be like, hey, it's Brandon again. <laughs> You've been dealing with me for a while. You should be used to this by now. Uh, I'm shipping these back and you're going to send me new copies. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's usually how it goes. Well, after dogging them for a little bit, uh, we'll we'll give it we'll give it a rest. Uh, <laughs> but I uh, I I have a newfound uh, I don't know the hate isn't really the word I want to use. And that's the thing but, I don't I don't hate know. comics Wellspring because they are sadly one of the best companies right now. Mm-hmm. But there's so much more that could be done to make them better or make a competitor better. Yeah. That's what, that's all we can hope for. Um, I may be looking into other printers and trying again. Um, I think best value copy. It could work. I can see it working. However, if I had a variant copy that I'm selling for $25, I wouldn't be using best value copy. Mm. Um, that's too much of my work. Um, Comics Wellspring did a good job at trimming these and stapling these. And my handiwork just, just does not compare. Uh, and <laughs> I would be ch- chopping up some of those variants. Um, but uh, I'll try. I'll try mix them. Uh, see if I can order like 10 or something uh, and see how that goes. Uh, and, but yeah, Comics Wellspring, they've got the, they've even got the little Kickstarter incentive. If you did this through crowdfunding, you get like what free shipping or some kind of like direct deal. In, yeah, there's a at, few things. There's one that <clears throat> I usually use if I am going to use Comics Wellspring. You can put their, uh, it's like a little uh, uh, JPEG or PNG, and you can put it anywhere within your campaign. You can put it at the very end, you can put it in the middle, wherever. Um, And if you send them an email and all the stuff ahead of time and get it cleared, uh, once your campaign's done, you let them know that, hey, my campaign's done, I'm going to be buying stuff soon. And they'll send you, it's either 10% 10% off or a 15% off uh, coupon code. I think it's maybe 15%. I can't remember. Gotcha. But, you know, that kind of 
that kind of um, relationship to have with a crowdfunded indie comic is just um, super, super nice, almost invaluable. But like, like yeah. we've been saying, these these issues, if they're this reoccurring um, over the course of four years, then then it may not be worth it. So we will. Uh, talk about that on the next time see what happens in my little uh, update uh, but until then we can only hope for the best um, all right so shoot Brandon what was I talking about before um, let's see um, I know I watched some movies. you had mentioned movies uh, I forgot what the first one was. I remember one was Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and talk about Nightmare on Elm Street. That one was, uh, I think that was pretty good for its time. Um, yeah, it just, it was really, it was well, uh, like, shot um i think some of the scripting was a little bit off uh but you know the the effects played a pretty good part in it uh for for most of it until kind of the very end uh we got a little bit torn away <laughs> out of <laughs> out of the immersion um you, you're telling me you didn't like the part where her mom at the very end turns into a dummy and gets pulled through all stiff like through the she window. gets turned into a dummy <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's how yeah. I interpret that scene i don't interpret it as like the actual mom went through she got <laughs> turned into a dummy and then got uh, yeah because it's um, a dream that's, anything can happen yeah that is what happened though yeah uh <laughs> um but yeah, it was uh it was not bad. Uh I'm trying to get into the mood of Freddy for Freddy Krueger cuz like I've got to like draw him for Paracon. Um oh, or at okay. least at least that's Stan's suggestion. It was like kind of the best he's got kind of idea like I don't know, make Freddy Krueger cuz um they really want to base it around horror and they've got some guy that like played a part in I really don't want to be offending him, but <laughs> he, he did something in Freddy yeah. Krueger. Uh, so they kind of want to be, they, they kind of want that to be the attraction. Um, and I can't tell you how much I do not want to draw Freddy Krueger, uh, especially making it a very detailed, nice piece uh, of illustration. Mm. <laughs> um, and it is also very difficult um, for me to make his face like a normal length, it's it's like his ears make this strange taper that I'm like visualizing the wrong way. Mm. And I've made the same mistake like three times where his face is just too short. Uh, it's more like a goblin than than a human burn victim. But uh, anyways, uh. I, I watched the movie to try and like help get some inspiration for it. And, yeah. Yeah. And I thought he was kind of cool. Cause you know, that's pretty, that's pretty brutal. You can't see him, but he's affecting the real world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I, uh, I would, my, my favorite of the nightmare on Elm street movies is the third one. I highly recommend watching that one. I think it's the best of them of the, six or seven originals I, in all honesty of six the, or seven there's <laughs> six six is like freddy's dead or something i don't know i forgot what it's <laughs> called freddy's last dance some yeah uh, bullcrap that's the sixth one then there's a seventh one which isn't really a seventh one it's called uh new nightmare um the pretty much the only ones I recommend is the first one, just so you get the idea and concept of Freddy Krueger. The first one's good. I'm honestly like not a huge fan of it. It's 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 good for its time. Mm -hmm. The third one I think still holds up because the third one is called Dream Warriors, and 
like all of it takes place <clears throat> like the second one you, you don't even have to see the second one if you want to right. go ahead but the second one you don't have to see it because the third one is really like the sequel to the first one um the third one takes place in like a a a psychiatric ward for children teenagers really um and my dog's barking of course freddie's here or something <laughs> um but uh takes place at a psychiatric ward and nancy comes to work there and she's now like 10 years older or something yeah. like that and these kids are starting to get picked off in the psychiatric ward through freddy through their nightmares right. and stuff and, and the 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 hospital is not like believing them or anything they think it's right. like a part of their conditions and stuff um but nancy is like trying to help them and like kind of train them to possibly right. like like oh we're going to somewhat fight back or, or not entirely fight back but like here's how we can actually defend ourselves in the dream world yeah it's really interesting it, it's really good okay because that that was the better that was the better part of uh part one was the fact that she found a very practical way of like being able to um defend herself and lure him and that kind of thing and so uh i did find that pr really interesting um so uh, yeah playing off that even more uh would be cool yeah so um, the third one and then the last one i'd recommend is new nightmare which is basically the seventh but you don't have to see any of the any ones the other ones from you you don't even have to see the third one to see this one you just need right. to see the first nightmare on Elm street to see this one because new nightmare is meta. Like, like Wes Craven, he's the guy that did scream, which is meta horror movie. So he's doing more mm -hmm. meta stuff with this, where you're in the real world, like our real world. And like, I forgot uh, the actress for Nancy. I forgot the actress or, or the actor for Freddie is a uh, Robert England. Like all these people are real people. And it's like in our real world, but like Freddy, this idea of Freddy actually is a real thing. And it was kind of Wes Craven. It, Freddy's like this demon and Wes Craven's like in making the movies has been like trying to, to like keep him encapsulated somewhat. Mm -hmm. And instead of like, like come down to the real world there, there's more to it, but like, it's really good. It's really okay. meta, but it's really good. <laughs> All right. Sounds fun. Um, the other one that we watched uh, was The Bay. And I really, really enjoyed The Bay. Uh, so what The Bay is, is a found footage uh, kind of documentary style uh, horror movie with uh, it's like the government is trying to kind of make a cover up of this uh, situation happening in this small town in Maryland, uh, Maine or Maryland, somewhere like that. And uh, there's uh, the, the, the town is based off of like this chicken farming and they're letting all these pollutants, pollu pollutants get into <laughs> the uh, water system and then, it's all getting transferred into the bay and uh, what's happening is there's some kind of funnel of, of uh, like storms or something are making some kind of uh, path of, of germs and like, plankton and all that kind of like stuff that gets that's that's in the current of the sea and it's like getting into the bay area where all these uh, pollutants are and it's kind of morphing these uh, biological and microscopic creatures into more revived and larger creatures and uh, they kind of 
start to uh, torment the people of this town on the 4th of July and very, very rapidly. Um, so uh, the government is trying to like figure it out and then cover it up and because it's absolutely horrific stuff that's going on. Um, and uh, I, I won't, I won't go too much more into detail, but it's a very good uh, suspense kind of movie um, mystery going on. There's uh, just a lot of stress happening during this movie, and, and it's a really good watch. It's it was super creative too. Yeah, I'm looking at images now. I I I thought I hadn't heard it before, but I've seen the poster. Like I've seen this poster before. It's like a almost like a, a X ray of a skeleton or something. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Um well I was going into it without uh realizing you hadn't watched it or re not realizing you hadn't seen it yet. I I, <laughs> I just thought about it. Like, yeah, I I I have not seen this yet. I'm seeing a uh, uh really good still image of some effects some gruesome effects i'm gonna have to check this out oh yeah some of the effects don't really hold up but they don't like they're not they're not you know the effects aren't like a pillar to this movie um, yeah yeah that's the thing is like like you can have a movie if if your movie if the plot or the characters are good and keeps me interested you can have like not great effects and i won't even mind mm -hmm. um it'd be great if they were great but if they're not like yeah i'm fine like uh example this is like a korean horror movie i guess it's kind of horror it's called the host and uh it's about like this big creature that i don't know if it spawns from like pollutants coming in there's mm -hmm. a lot of polluting Horror movies like <laughs> do polluting the one. Um, but this big like underwater creature that comes out and like is just like wreaking havoc on uh the city, kind of. Um, and the creature doesn't look great. It's 2006. <laughs> yeah, so the CGI is is so so they didn't have a giant budget, but the the characters, the plot is really good to where like I don't really pay that any mind. So mm -hmm. Well, I'll have to check out the host. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I guess we're just going to have to like set up movie reviews or something. <laughs> yeah, I've seen um, a lot of movies recently. And yeah, a lot of I've been going back to some 2000s comedies. Uh, I'm going to watch some more. So maybe another episode I'll uh, briefly talk about what holds up and what doesn't is there is there something that you're watching in the next uh between now and our next podcast that um i could check out um that's like you know for sure I'll that you're gonna watch think. where's my phone i actually have a list <laughs> list of them. <laughs> <laughs> hold on let me see uh horror movies i i couldn't tell you i just have to be in the mood and watch those but these uh let me see. Yeah, I'm mostly just trying to watch some older comedies. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to see if this one holds up. I feel like it still will. But uh, Grandma's Boy, I, I've i seen that a couple times. And I watched that in middle school, and there's still a lot of stuff I, I remember quoting with my middle school friends and stuff. But it's about, like, some game developers and one of them, something happens in their life and they have to go live with their grandma and their grandma, their grandma's like, it's like the, the golden girls. Like she has like mm -hmm. two friends and stuff. And it's just like wacky, wacky, dumb, funny stuff. Um, yeah, I saw that. I might watch hot rod sometime soon again. <laughs> the, I might the watch Andy hot Stanberg rod. One. I, I haven't seen that in a while. I, I, remember laughing a lot with it and i still every now and then quote cool beans <laughs> cool, 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 minute cool, long beans, of them beans. doing something cool beans. cool beans um 
And then this one I haven't seen in a while. Uh, Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story, where it's it's basically it's kind of like a parody movie of biopics, like music biopics. Um, I remember watching it before, and it just like being hilarious because the biggest ones that it like parodies is uh, Walk the Line, that Johnny Cash biopic mm-hmm. that came in like 2005 or whatever oh yeah and then yeah. also some beatles ones but like it's one of those that like there's like modern day biopics you can watch walk hard the dewey cox story and it's still like oh it's still par- like it's a parody and we're still doing like this stereotypical <laughs> crap yeah. with these biopics kind of um, um so, does that have that like, guy crazy. that was uh in talladega nights Yes, and, uh, and he was in Step Brothers. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played. Uh, uh, I don't remember their names. I, don't the, I was about to say I don't the curly his haired one. Name. Right. Yeah, I was about to say the curly haired one, but Will Ferrell also has yeah, curly hair. But so. if you say, but he, you were, you know, Will Ferrell enough to be like yeah. Will Ferrell. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I feel kind of bad. I don't, I don't know his actor name. And I do not remember his role name in any yeah. of the other ones. Because I was about to say Danny McBride, but that's not Danny McBride. Danny McBride's the uh, uh, shoot. I'm trying to think of something super recognizable that Danny McBride's done. Uh, I'm gonna be real. I don't know a lot of actors, so <laughs> they've got to be like. They've got to be top of the top actors. And even yeah, then, yeah. it's it's like a big if, if I know them. Yeah. But um, um, yeah, those are some of the ones I'm going to watch. There's others, but uh, I'm not so sure how those are going to be. Like Tio and I, either next week or the week after, we're planning to just talk about comedy movies. And that can trail off on whatever. But there's some I want to watch or catch up on to see if see if it's it's worth talking about at all all right man um you got a zoom meeting i believe here soon um i'm kind of running on fumes in my uh cognitive speed and social battery so uh Mm -hmm. it's been really good getting catch up with you and talking smack about that comic wellspring (laughs) uh hopefully we will get that figured out um, but we will have everybody updated on that come next time. Um, but, uh, I'm again at Mer- uh, Austin light with American demon comics. Uh, you can find me at American demon comics.com. You can support me at Patreon. You can like the video. You can go like my stuff on TikTok. You can go like my Facebook page. All that stuff helps. It gives me a little bit of recognition and I advise everybody do the same for my friend, Brandon Ingram with Disney Comics. Brandon, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, I'd say do all that stuff. Uh, uh, I'm working on multiple comics right now. Uh, this this year is going to be kind of dry in terms of releases. I might have one or two comics come out the last half, but next year I feel like there's, there's going to be a lot. So just uh, working towards that. And in the meantime... For those listening, uh, uh, go watch some some older comedy movies. Uh, go watch Idiocracy. I <laughs> recently rewatched that. That was really good. So, recommendations. Well, all right. Uh, I think I'm going to go watch uh, Grandma's Boy and uh, Hot Rod. And uh, everybody should do the same, and we can all be on the same page. <laughs> all right. Catch you later, Brandon. See you, man.